Hey everybody, it is The Last Raider. We are back with another video. And today we're in comics for the moment. Because my last couple comic videos have actually done pretty good. So I'm trying to have I'm trying to do some good stuff, okay? Trying to trying to bring y'all some good quality entertainment instead of quanti quantity. This morning, however, I was looking through my Twitter feed and I saw this from uh, Sar Sarcastic Symbiote, I believe Real Rice Coon. And uh, Real Rice Coon, I like looking at his stuff because he's, when it comes to women, him and I have about the same taste. And that is, we like them. We like them round and fit. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 like, I like the chicks. I like my chicks looking healthy and fit and rounded. All right, that's just you know, it's like peach, <laughs> like like a good peach, a lot of ham, some bounce in their step. If you know what I mean. So, what gets interesting is he puts out this on one of the books he's coming from, and he notices Jen here, which is also you know Sea Hulk, and she looks good. She looks amazing. She looks like. Um, she looks almost like one of those anime chicks that, you know, is her stick is she's a little, she's a little muscly, you know, she's, she's got the muscle and she's fit and she looks fuckable. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's attractive. <clears throat> Captain America is looking, you know, muscles on top of muscles. Tony Stark is looking, you know, about as cool as a nerd with a power armor can look. <laughs> But I mean, every, everything here in this artwork just looks amazing. Now, I don't know much about the storyline, but the art is looking good. And he's, Ryan Stegman here, who is the artist, he is going back, it seems, to, you know, hot chicks and good looking dudes. Um, <clears throat> and here's the thing. I, I had, I'd actually gotten into a conversation, a little bit of a conversation with um, Rice. And I said, uh, is Ryan straight and white? Because everyone was asking, you know, why is he going back to this? Why is he doing this right now in current age Marvel? <clears throat> that could cause problems with you. And, you know, Rice comes in there and he goes, yeah, you know, it's uh, that could change tomorrow <laughs> kind of jokes. I said, yeah, but that means he's got more to lose than the Rainbow Brigade over at Marvel. Um, what that means is, you know, he's Ryan Stegman, in my opinion, is probably trying to save his job right now. He's one of them guys that got his dream job at Marvel, and he probably wants to keep it. The problem is nobody can work at Marvel or DC or any of these current big publishing comic companies and not recognize that if you're a certain race, a certain gender, and a certain sexual orientation, that you are always on the chopping block. <clears throat> you're always going to get fired. First. Not second, not last. You're getting fired first. And Ryan Stegman probably recognizes this. I would say he's probably a straight male. He recognizes that he is first on the chopping block when Marvel starts coming down. So he's doing the one, the smartest thing that most employees could do. He is improving the quality of his work. He is trying to raise the value of his art form, <clears throat> so to speak. You look over at DC and you look at DC right now. DC's gone through, what is it, three bloodbaths already? They have axed a ton of people. And Mariko Tamaki is still putting out the book, I Am Not Starfire, with Starfire and her illegitimate bastard child with the penguin. Why are they still putting those books out? Because the people that are getting fired last know their job is still secure because somebody in front of them is still going to get fired first. They still got a lot of dicks over at DC and the dicks are getting chopped off before the pussies get chopped off. And Mariko Tamaki knows this. <clears throat> That's why most of the people that are working at DC, they're still going to put out trash books until the very last minute. And then they're going to try and figure out how to do this. It's not going to work. Ryan Stegman, however, it looks like, is getting ahead of the curve. <clears throat> He's going to try and sell books just off artwork. And in my opinion, this is what, if, if you are if you are one of those people that haven't given up on Marvel yet, you need to get out there. Check my volume here real quick. I just realized I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm, I'm doing a video with no, um, 
with no uh, sound on it. That would be embarrassing, but I got sound. <laughs> We're all right, folks. We didn't, we, a small technical, technical check. That's all it was, just a small sound check. We're all right. But anyway, Ryan is probably getting out there and he is doing the smart business decision. He's facing the chopping block. And this is why Comics Gate and Manga are just still going to kick mainstream Western comics ass because of what Ryan Stegman's doing right here. They face, you, you look at any Marvel or any uh, manga artist or writer, look at any Comics Gate writer or artist. They're facing the chopping block every day. Ethan Van Skyver with the millions that he's made off Cyberfrog. That Joker is facing the chopping block. Your boy Zach faces the chopping block. Um, <clears throat> John Malin's facing the chopping block every day. Cecil's facing the chopping block. If they come out there, they know that if they put out some weird, wokey, approved body type bullshit, that they could get fired from the people and left out in the cold immediately. And in doing that, that fear, that ability to lose everything, lights a fire under their ass so that they produce the best art, the best stories. Why do you think Ethan Van Skyver is making millions right now? Because him and Ryan Stegman are in the same boat. Ryan may work at Marvel, and Ethan Van Skyver may work for himself, but they're both in the same boat. They're both sitting over there facing the guillotine. And right now they're both got a fire in their ass. They're like, I have got to make myself look so valuable in the eyes of the fans that firing me is absolutely a non-issue. That if they want good stuff, they can't just leave me behind. It's the concept of if you're in a survival situation, I tell people all the time, the best way to survive in a disaster is to have some kind of skill. I remember a story about a dude in Florida one time after one of the major hurricanes hit. I think it was either Florida or Louisiana one. I think it was during Katrina. But he ended up getting the entirety of the gang. He ended up getting like four or five gangs protecting him. Because he knew how to purify water. That dude built a small purification plant in his backyard. And these gang members who went from having to survive like they're on the streets to having to survive like they're out in the wild realize that this dude has water purification and they put guards out in front of this dude's house to protect him and his family. They, nobody looted this man. They actually went and got materials for him to expand his water purifying operation because they were enjoying it as well. Dude survived out there. He lived like a king. He lived like a dadgum warlord out there. Why? Because he had something that helped him survive. It made him invaluable. That's what's going on here. <clears throat> You win in comic books and in capitalism by providing value. And Ryan Stegman right now is trying to provide value, I think, to the fans. Because he's hoping that maybe if his artwork is in there, he might attract more people. If he can prove to Marvel's executives that you put me on a book, man, just my art brings you in an extra $100,000. Imagine if you gave me a good, art, a, a good writer that could write a good story. Somebody else over at Marvel is probably going to look at what, what Ryan Stegman says and say, Ryan, you and I, man, um, I got this great story. Uh, the chicks, I need them to look sexy. The men, I need them to be heroic. Okay, uh, we're, we're also not writing any fucking politics. Don't, don't say anything, but we're not putting any fucking politics in. It's going to be old school, Stan Lee style comic book. You get someone, a writer over there that has the same situation that Ryan's in right now, where he's facing... Or, where I think he's at right now, where he's facing the chopping block like Ethan Van Skyver, Marvel will have a million-dollar comic book on their hands immediately. Because unlike Mags Visaggio, unlike Mariko Tamaki, and Heather Antos, and Osama Aminat, and many other morons over there at Marvel in DC who don't face chopping block, they're secure. They don't have to worry about it. They are, they're basically working at Marvel and DC on a living wage. This is where I will call out people like Vosh. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a pot shot at Vosh. You want to see why communism does not work and is bad for your country? Look at what it's doing to the comic book industry. 
These people literally are living off of a living wage, like you're wanting in your communist utopia. And what do they do? Because I hear the same thing from every communist. They're like, oh, but if someone... It will still have doctors and lawyers because they, they won't be doing it for money. They'll be doing it out of the goodness of their heart. No. You'll get shitty doctors and public defenders. And public defenders aren't worth their salt 90% of the time. I, my, my legal advice to people, if you can sell your house and get a lawyer instead of a public defender, sell your house and get a lawyer <laughs> because they'll do, they actually will have to win. Public defender gets paid whether you win or not. That doctor is going to get paid in communism whether you live or die. They're still getting paid. So they don't have a whole lot, unlike a guy in capitalism, who if you don't live, he's probably not going to get paid. So he's going to, he's going to get a fire lit under his ass. You have to survive because you've got to pay a bill afterward. <laughs> he's got to charge you money afterward. That's the same thing in the comic industry. You have got to have a fire lit under your ass if you're going to make it in the comic book industry. You're going to make it in video games. You need the fire under your ass. You get the fire from facing the block. If you're not facing that firing block, you're not putting your heart and soul into it. You have to write. You have to draw. You have to imagine. You have to three-dimensionally sculpt or program like your life depends on it. And that is what Ethan Van Skyver is doing. His entirety, his channel, uh, the live streams he does. Ethan Van Skyver, when I watch his videos, he's putting his all into the videos. You look at his art, he's putting his all into the art. Now, I think Ethan Van Skyver could benefit from a good, you know, he could throw out there like a good story idea and have a writer, you know, like sculpt it and fine tune the roughness out of it, make a diamond out of that rock and polish it up and, and give it the nice cut and, and to where it shines really good. And then Ethan can add his particular brand of uh, artwork to it, which is just his artwork is amazing with very few mistakes in it. And, and you, he would actually make more money. But at the end of the day, Ethan Van Skyver, your boy Zach, almost anyone in comic state, even people in war campaign, and I know people are going to get pissed at me for this, but even guys in war campaign who are doing their own comic books, they're facing the chopping block too. When you face the chopping block, it makes you a better worker and it makes you a better artisan. Why? I, let me tell you something about my job. I do construction. There are two things I hate to do. I hate painting. I hate roofing. The two things that you do the most in, in construction are painting and roofing. You don't get to build houses all the time unless you're with a major company. So what do I do? Well, my life right now depends on painting. So I'm a pretty damn good painter. I've had people get on there. My wife, for instance, is an artistic painter. She cannot surface paint for shit. Now, she can paint you a picture, and it looks really good. She's like a female Bob Ross when it comes to painting. But if you try to get her to paint trim, it'll take her five hours to get a single small piece of trim painted. Me, I get on there, I know how to put the paint onto a brush, and I've learned over the years to take it and lay it. And then I've learned how to spread it and move it across there and get it to coat evenly and coat thickly. So I only have to go back about twice and put a second coat on. I don't need to put three, four coats on like some people. I've learned how to lay it and lay it thick and still keep my beads and runs and everything off of it so it looks good. Why? Because if I want to eat sometimes, i got to paint. So I got to be good at it. I don't want to paint forever. So I want to get the painting done as quickly as possible so that I get paid in the least amount of time. If I don't paint very good, people won't hire me back. Unfortunately, that's the job I do the most in construction. So I've got to be good at it. I have a fire lit under my ass. Even something I don't want to do, I'm still good at it because I'm facing the chopping block. And if I face the chopping block, if I end up in the chopping block, I end up starving. Imagine what an artist would do if they face the chopping block doing something they love. You end up with someone like Ethan Van Skyver who makes millions off a of book. You end up with someone like your boy Zach who goes from a nobody in the comic industry to now the guy that they hushly whisper and should not be named because this dude, he went out there and mixed the Expendables with the Avengers and made a fuck ton of money off of it. Or John Malin, or... Uh, God, I can't remember everybody. Or even Cecil, man. Cecil, little fat dude who ends up making a shit ton of money. He just pulls off a cash grab and runs off. 
you make this kind of cash, you make that kind of success when you face that chopping block. And Ryan Stegman, I think, is doing the same thing. I think he's facing the chopping block. He knows his ass is on the line, and he likes to draw, and he wants to keep his job at Marvel. And so he is right now drawing for the fans like his life depends on it, in my opinion. That there is what we would probably need more of if you wanted to save comic books. Manga is the same way. That's why manga looks so damn sharp. It is sharp and shiny. And the chicks, the dudes jump off the page. The chicks just enamor you. You will sit there and look at that for hours on end. Like it's a dang Playboy mag. Because it's enamoring. It is beauty to the highest extent that Japan can draw it at. It is in their, they, they draw it as much and as good as they can. Because at the end of the day, and a lot of people don't know this, some manga companies will actually put your art, put the, the life of your manga up to vote at some times. This actually happens over in Japan. Imagine if they did that with Marvel, where it was voted, where the people could vote whether they wanted your book to last or not. Marvel would just fucking kill things. There'd be a lot of projects. There'd be a lot of things we'd never have seen. We'd have never seen Gogur Hulk. Spider-Man would still be with Mary Jane and he wouldn't have gotten raped by that weird um, dirty-handed Asian chick they got right now. He wouldn't be in superhero alimony. Tony Stark wouldn't have died. Captain Marvel would be Miss Marvel and she'd be in a leotard with a thong back on it because the fans would vote him out. In Japan... They'll vote on whether or not your your manga stays going. That's why a lot of times mangas just end ab abruptly, or an anime will end abruptly when it was really good because it was like the people finally got over in Japan. They finally got sick and tired of it, and the artist or the writer didn't didn't entice the uh, the fans as much. It's one of the reasons why I said the guy that writes One Piece, man, he's still coming up with great shit. <laughs> they haven't voted his butt out yet. But anyway, like I said, when you've got a fire under your ass, it makes you work and it makes you work hard. So you don't need to look at the chopping block as a bad thing. It's a bit of perspective. You don't need to look at the chopping block every day as, oh my God, I wish this wasn't over me. You need to thank God that that chopping block is there. Because that thing is driving you towards success. It drives several other people to success. You see the difference with what DC's putting out now, the video I did yesterday about Starfire's daughter, and you see Ryan Stegman and Ethan Van Skyver putting out hot chicks. And they're probably going to sell. This actually interests me almost enough. If the story is good, I would almost consider buying a new Marvel book for the first time in 10 fucking years. You actually have, Marvel, you actually have a former fan who like whose only real intra investment in Marvel is classic books and the current and the movies. As soon as the movies go to like current era Marvel, I'm I'm absolutely out. But right now you've got a fan who hasn't bought Marvel in ten years, considering a book in ten years because the artist is respecting the art form and is respecting me as a fan and giving me you know heroic looking characters. If the if the story's up to snuff, I may actually buy this. I don't know. But the story has to be up to snuff first. I wouldn't buy it just for the artwork. I'd want a pretty good story to, you know, I'd want some adventure, something to escape, especially from this political climate. But like I said, y'all don't need to be looking at the chopping block as a bad thing. You don't need to look at it as, oh, I'm trying to run, I'm trying to just stay in and not get fired. You need to look at that and say, that right there, uh, if the fans finally give up on me, then I, I'm officially washed up. Ethan Van Skyver left DC before the axing started, before they started firing all of his former, uh, uh, <clears throat> all the employees that were employed with Ethan Van Skyver. And Ethan Van Skyver has ended up with more money and more success. And everyone that stayed over at DC that had job security. They fall on the wayside. They, they, a lot of them are now losing their jobs. 
He's been Vince Skyver is at a point. If he was at a company, if he was at DC right now, writing Cyberfrog, oh, they would not care. They could come in there and say, well, Ethan's a straight white male and a Trump supporter. And AT&T would look at him and go, but Ethan's making a million dollars. Shut the fuck up and get back in there and get to work or we'll fire your sorry ass. Anyway, folks, <clears throat> I'm the last Raider. Tell me what you think about the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Helps out and support this channel pretty good. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.